children talk celebrants what are they why have one um, <clears throat> what's the difference um, there's there's a couple of movements there's um, give gives couple give couples choice movement going on at the moment there's um, yeah it's just trying to sort of highlight the choice the choice is already there so um, hi Susan so the, cho the choice is already there. So it's not about changing. Well, for some people, it is about changing the choice and it's about changing the power that those options have. At the moment in England, it's different in Scotland. At the moment in England, a celebrant is 100%. Sorry, I'm so wobbly. It's because the technology. Uh, 100% ceremonial. So not legally binding. No strings attached. No checks needed to give. I like that. I love that. Um, there is a move to make celebrants legal. Um, not that they're not illegal, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like to make them legally binding. I'm not sure I'm on board with that. I know I'm probably going against the grain of pretty much every celebrant I know. So I love that they've got the drive for that. But I don't know if I'm on that train. For me, there is already choice out there. Celebrants are 100% ceremonial in England. And therefore, we are part of your wedding suppliers band. Or your funeral suppliers gang. Or your naming day supplying address book. We're a supplier. So you get to choose. And you go for who you like. And you go for who makes you feel good or who makes you feel safe or who you feel is in your tribe and there's no strings attached and I, that's that's what I love um, I didn't want to be a registrar because I don't want to have the restrictions or the weight or the responsibility of making sure it's all legally binding and all correct and the T's are crossed and the I's are dots and you know all that hi Lou um, all that jazz I, I don't I don't want it and I don't because it will it has to be controlled to make something legal it has to be controlled so there will be boundaries and there will be constraints and there will be checks that you need to have but that that's what registrars do registrars register births deaths and marriages they didn't used to register marriages because it was just the church so they registered births and deaths because they put you in the system and they took you out the system what you did in the system, they didn't need to know. They were like, whatever. Um, but then obviously Henry VIII got a little carried away with his uh, weddings. Um, and it didn't have to go through the church anymore because he changed the construct of the church. And it was now no longer Roman Catholic and it was now Church of England. Um, because that's Henry VIII for you. <laughs> um, and so registrars then started to be able to register marriages as well as the church but they didn't do the ceremonies. Now, if you're a registrar and you're just registering births, deaths, and marriages, at some point, I should imagine, you'd want to take a ceremony because that's the nice bit. And so that section of the registrar has grown. And now they don't really tell you that you can just register your marriage without the ceremony. Even me going onto websites today, they're like, wedding what you're like wedding's the event I don't need you to be at the wedding I just want you to register my marriage and it's it's so deeply hidden um I think it's actually misleading and I think that's what needs the attention that actually if you want to register your marriage you need to be informed that just to do that is something that you can do you don't have to hire a room you don't have to take the registrar out of their place of work on a Saturday 20 miles away from the office you can go to them on a Wednesday afternoon, register the marriage, and it's under a hundred pounds. They just they just don't tell you that. If you ask, they'll tell you. But you've I looked on a few websites, I've got a bride that um didn't want to split the marriage and the wedding, so we were gonna have the wedding, and then registrar was gonna do the registration of marriage afterwards when all the guests were having their canapes. They were thinking that the couple were going to go off and just do their photos, but they were just going to go off and do the marriage and some photos. <clears throat> um, 
but then COVID and yada, 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 yada. And it was just, just more simple for her to do her legals ahead of the wedding. But she tried three different boroughs, three different registry offices, so much digging. She's like, oh my God, this is so stressful. Um, but I was like, try this person at this office and ask this question. And then she was like, tick, 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 done, it's booked, thank you very much. I was like, it's so stressful. And it shouldn't be. But I think it's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, when there's couples on here, the fact that you can get the legals done separately takes takes care of the stress and the worry of the legals. Because when you are doing it legally, you can't muck up the names. You can't have a drink beforehand. You can't have a joke and it be a little bit fun because you have to do it soberly, sincerely and after serious thought and it has to be legally binding and you meet them 15 minutes beforehand and you do some questionnaires and some tests, you know. It's not so much like, where did your husband to be go to primary school? It's not so much that. They're just checking, not just. They're doing a very, very important check that you aren't being coerced into marriage. It's not an arranged um, union against your will. It's not for, you know, green card, even though it's not a thing, but it's not to try and keep you in the country. They're checking that it's sincere and it's genuine and you both are doing it of your free will. And that needs to be done. I don't want to be the one doing that. I love the fact that when we come to the wedding, all that stress is done. The wedding is all event, all ceremonial, no legally binding contracts. You can do what you like. If you want to turn, walk down the aisle with a glass of champagne in your hands, go ahead. I will have one and I will cheers you when you get to the top. Um, if you want to have pieces of music that might have a hymn in, so will have religious connotations, or you might have Granny Sue who wants to read you all things bright and beautiful, fine. Because I don't have to be impartial. I'm your supplier. If you want it, you can have it. But if celebrants become legal, at some point there's going to have to be control to make sure that it is sincere and is all the things that the registrar does. So it just isn't... I'm not, I don't disagree with it. I, it's just not quite sitting with me. and I'm just a bit wary of it and I'm doing a bit more digging. Um, there's quite a lot of... Um, movement around this at the moment um it is quite anglo-american there's quite a lot of american input into it i mean my go back to joey and friends you know like joey could marry you monica who was she marrying chandler i'm guessing god i can't remember it was years ago now i just remember that joey did the wedding and thought i like that i want to do that um but for me Doing your legals is a really important thing and needs its own person, needs its own space and needs its own time and needs its own head space and the gravitas that goes with that. And I like that it can be done before or after so that come the ceremony you can then do what you like. With a church wedding, um, C of V I know more about than Catholic, um, you do both. You have your wedding ceremony and you can sign your register, so your legally binding um, register at the end. You walk down the aisle and you can carry on walking to the vestry or you get halfway through the ceremony and you say, oh, we now come to the signing and you do the signing. But in both cases, registrar and church, the signing of the register is not the legally binding bit. You don't have to have a marriage certificate. If you don't have a marriage certificate, pretty much you can't do anything because our society is you need the paper to prove it but that's also why they can charge and they can go oh it's six pound fifty for your wedding certificate because it's not an essential clearly it isn't essential but it's not an essential so you can buy two three four i would say buy three have one to keep one to post and one spare in case it doesn't come back with the post um but what is legally binding is your witnesses so the couple will have a witness each so you have the couple two and then you have the two witnesses that are witnessing their individual person so say for example your bride and bride the bride would have her witness and the other bride would have her witness groom and groom bride and groom whatever and then the registrar would have her or his witness 
which is that random person sitting down, which if you, I can't read it to you, no, sorry. If you've ever been to registrar-led wedding, you have the registrar lady that says, it's great, I'll just be here. I'm here to, in the laws of da-da-da, and it's all quite formal. Um, and then there's that random person sat, sat there who she introduces, and here's so-and-so witnessing, and you're like, okay, who's she? Uh, she's witnessing the registrar, because you've got a witness, they've got a witness, and everyone is witnessing. That's the legally binding bit. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Helen Amy Noble, no, not of any lawful impediment, da 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 and I call upon these persons of presence, and I know not of any lawful impediment. Two sentences, 10 minutes, about £80. That's you married. If the fire alarms go off and you need to leg it and you haven't signed the register, that's okay. You're legally married. The the, the paperwork just proves that you've done your witnessing. Um, so, there you go. That's the difference. In church, the vicar is licensed to do marriages within their building. So you can't have your marriage in the churchyard. You can't have your marriage in the field behind the churchyard. It has to be in the building because that priest is licensed to that church. I don't know for a fact if another priest can marry a couple in someone else's church. So say you grew up in Somerset in, a, in the family church and that family vicar's lovely, lovely, lovely. He christened you. You'd love him to marry you, but he's retired. Can that retired vicar still marry you in someone else's church? I don't think they can. I think they can come along. They can be invited. It's courteous to say to the actual vicar of the church you're actually getting married in, would it be okay if my um, childhood vicar comes along and does some prayers? Um, that's more courteous but you can still get married in that church by that vicar. So that's, is that helpful? The marriage license, the paperwork, isn't the legally binding bit. So if the fire alarms go off before you've signed, that's okay, you're not, you're not not legally married, you've said your vows and everyone has witnessed it. Separating the legals, if you take it out of the ceremony, so you're just saying to the registrar, I would like to register my marriage, just the two by two, us two, our two witnesses, and you with your one witness. So it's the two by two, the couple and the witnesses. In your place of work, in your time of work, so half ten on a Wednesday morning, we'll come to you at your place, in your place of work. We don't need to hire a room, we're not having guests. It's not a thing. It's not an event. We just need you to do your job as a registrar and register our marriages. And it's under £100. I, that feels sensible to me. With the movement of it going gives couples choice, you have the choice. You do your legally bindings and then you have your ceremony with someone you've met. That's the crux of it. The celebrant is your chosen supplier. You've chosen them, you've seeked them out, you've had a meeting, you've had a discovery call, you've talked about what your hopes and dreams are, you've talked about your aspirations, you've discovered your style, you've met with other suppliers, they know each other, it's the industry, you've, you've, it's just brilliant. With the registrar, you meet them in your dress on arrival. They're a complete stranger. Then you have those 50 minutes of quizzing and then they'll see at the top and do, your, and do your wedding. There are some really lovely registrars out there, uh, super lovely registrars, and they will try and make it as lovely as they possibly can. But there are constraints because it is legally binding. So there is a script that is countrywide. There are things that they have to say because there is restrictions and boundaries and legalities. So yes, you can have a lovely set of, um, registrar, but it's chance, it's luck, it's fingers crossed, let's hope. The hope is you don't go into being a registrar if you don't like people and you don't like love and you don't like ceremonies because that's part of the attraction of the job. Um, but it's still a chance. More now, um, registrars are letting you say your own vows. 
they do have to say their own bit first and then they can say, I understand you want to say something to your now husband. Um, and everyone goes, ooh, and they can do the vows then. That is nice, but there's no dress rehearsal. There's no practice. You've just done all the legal stuff, which made you really nervous with a stranger. So you've had to adapt to that. You don't get a practice. So you just don't know where to stand, when, where, with who, and how long and why. And then she says, over to you. And you're like, ugh. But because it's still a legally binding ceremony, they still have to vet it. So you have to send your music in. You have to send your um, lyrics in. If you're having a reading, you need to submit it. Because if it says angels, God, spirit, whatever, that's a no. It's got to be, you know, AA Mel and Winnie the Pooh. Or something. That is as nice as you can get it without going too deep. So I'm going to change hands because that hand's gone cold and freezing. Uh, stiff, sorry. Um, that sort of applies to church. That um, you can choose your readings to a point. But the general sort of practice is, I've got a lot of friends at Vickers, that they will let you choose the second reading to be kind of whatever you want it to be. But they would prefer you to have a Bible reading, which is fair enough because you're getting married in a church. Um, so you've got that choice as well. I think what's getting confusing and what people are sort of checking in on is that we're now getting quite Anglo-American. And I know from having my wedding meetings with my clients over the years that they'll say, oh, we we'll do this, this, this. And I say, like, OK, that's quite American. We can do it this way. And they're like, is it? I'm like, yeah, that's how the Americans do it. Because everyone's watched a ton of um, rom-coms, me included, because I love a rom-com. Um, but that flurry of royal weddings we had, that was a very British way. The maid's maid, so they come in after the bride. There's little touches like that that is English or British. Um, so American is flower girls, bridesmaids, you know. Keep it coming, keep it coming, single file, last forever, whole nother track, pause, new track, bright. That is American. Um, it's not wrong, but if someone says, oh, I want quite a typically English wedding, and I was like, okay, well, the, here's, here's actually what's an English wedding, traditionally. And by that, I mean, this is what ten, this is what used to happen in the church before we had the freedom to not have it in the church. But there's also security and familiarity. So they might say they want an English wedding, but in their head, it's the American way. And that's fine because they feel safe with it. They just didn't realise that was a thing. So, but then also for me, a lot of my clients want that sort of church feel because they've grown up in Church of England country, being England. Um, they probably went to a C of E school they all probably did have to sing All Things Bright and Beautiful. Um, but it's not a bad rhythm of service. Like the way actually it's designed, it's quite, it's quite a nice service. Um, and I like that rhythm. You know, the, the way it is. What's the word? Like the order of service. So mine doesn't, mine isn't too far off of that because I don't think it's wrong. Um, I think it kind of works. Obviously, it's a template and we go this way, that way, over and under. Over the Irish Sea. That's a song, isn't it? A bottle of rum to fill my tongue, and that's a life for me. Um, so, oh, yes, yeah, so, so there we go. I think there is already quite a lot of choice out there. I think people don't realise there's a choice out there. So it's not necessarily about saying, we want to help you change your choices. It's about informing you of the choices that are already there. I think they will change. I think it might take a few years. But there's things like, oh, um, they said, oh, did you know that the wedding doesn't count if it's not consummated? And I was like, no, oh, there must be more to it than that. Um, so did a bit of digging, asked a few questions, spoke to the right people. Um, and it's, it's there because... Um, right, how do I phrase this? So in the marriage law, it says you are entitled... Oh, I can't think of the, we want couples to make informed choices. Yes, absolutely. It's all about informed choices. But just, just yeah, it's information. And I was saying, I was saying, um, Penny, that 
trying to get hold of the information about the registrars and the fact that you can do a two by two, you really have to dig. And sometimes it's not there. Um, so I was trying to do some screen grabs to send to a couple of brides. They were going, so what do I say and how do I do it and where do I go? Um, and uh, yeah, it's a whole, hi Lucy. It, yeah, it's totally about informing the choice. So, you know, couples, give me a call. We will, I'll tell you what you need to know because so many people don't know that they need to know it, you know? If you know what you need to know, you know what to research, you know what to find out. If you don't even know that it's a thing, why would you look for it? Why would you try and research it? Because you don't know it's there. So registrars are legally binding. They now add on the ceremony. If you just want the legally binding, you really have to dig. You have to ask the right questions and you have to quite persevere because otherwise you'll get hit for a 500 bill when actually you only need to pay 100. Um, the church has the advantage that the celebrants have in that you will know them but you will know them to a point because main like head office churches which are called parish churches will have more than one vicar so the vicar is like the head the head teacher i suppose the chief exec um, and they will have staff around them so it might be you've met the vicar of the church who's the vicar of the parish but actually that's his saturday off and his his curate's doing the ceremony or um the deacon is having a go at her first wedding and you're her first wedding and all your meetings have been with the vicar and not with the cure, not with the deacon and you're like oh who are you um that's unusual because they would normally talk about it because they don't need to spring it on you because they would have done the rota but some churches do have more than one priest and you will work in a rota so who you book at the time of booking the venue the church won't necessarily be the person taking a wedding with a celebrant, there are no surprises. You, you've you chosen who you've booked. They are the person that you book. They are the person you have your meetings with. I just, if you spent a year and a half planning a wedding, designing everything, being invested, you might spend a year in lockdown, da 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 why at the very end do you just want a surprise? Oh. Anyway. Ah. You might like surprises. I think there's different types of surprise. Anyway, same with funerals. In registrars register the death. They don't need to witness the event of the dying. Births, they don't need to witness the birth. They will, they will need the witness, as in their parent or another witness, to register the birth. So that's where weddings is the event. Birth is the event. Death is the event. The registrars register it. If you are looking for a celebrant-led funeral, you have choice. Same, same. If you went to a church, the vicar that you speak to might not be the vicar on duty. Hopefully you get a nice vicar that will say, oh, it's not me that day, it's so-and-so. Can I meet so-and-so? Yes, of course, he works every other Sunday because he shares with three other churches, you know, whatever. Um, so it's just remembering to ask the question, is the person you're with at the time of booking the person that's going to take the ceremony um same with funeral directors when you go into the funeral arranger meet with them they might do a job share so who you've spoken to on a tuesday isn't the person that's gonna sign your dad off on the friday afternoon because they're on a job share it's just making again knowing that's a thing and knowing to ask the question so that you have an informed choice to go i want a church where there's one vicar doing one thing with my one person um but with a celebrant that's all that's a given that's a tick you know you book me penny whoever i've got quite a few on here hello celebrant gang um you book us there are some celebrants who've grown in that they have a team underneath them but they will let you know and that'll be really obvious from their booking that this is that person and they have these people and they become a, I don't know, co-op's the wrong word, but you know when they just have, anyway, uh, they have staff, people under their wings, something. Um, so that's for me the really, really, really important thing. We are very WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. There are no surprises, whether it's a funeral or a naming. And it's, so I've got a naming ceremony coming up that 
pretty much nobody's met the baby because they've been in lockdown. And when the baby's a newborn baby, the last thing you want is a ton of people coming around because there's a deadly virus out there. So then don't get a stranger to come and do the naming. You're like, well, I, I, I know who you are. I know you've been in this bubble. I know you've had contact with these many people. So that's a controlled risk. If you're just letting strangers come in, that's not a controlled risk. So yeah, hope that's helpful. Let me know if you've got any questions, comments. Um, yeah, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. And a lot more, obviously. I won't turn up with a scarf. <laughs> anyway, take care, lots of love. Bye. <laughs>